This is a somber day in the history of San Diego County. Today marks 20 years since the deadly shooting at Santana High School. NBC7's Artie Ojeda has a look back at the quick reaction by first responders and for them how the shooting still strikes an emotional nerve all these years later. I remember driving home and I was driving by a church and I thought, oh my gosh, what just happened? It was a Monday, March 5th, 2001, just after 9 o'clock in the morning. 20 years ago today, now retired Sheriff's Lieutenant Christine Robbins was a sergeant in charge of an unthinkable scene. There was a, a sea of kids that literally were running across the street, jumping fences, just trying to get off of campus. In a matter of minutes, two students were killed, 13 others injured. The shooter, 15-year-old Andy Williams. It turns out Sergeant Robbins was married to fellow deputy, now retired Lieutenant Paul Robbins. He was a member of the SWAT team who happened to be working out at a fitness center a few miles away when he received the shocking page. It said something to the effect of active shooter, Santana High School. There's this picture taken by a Union Tribune photographer. That's Deputy Robbins still in his workout clothes, one of the first SWAT responders. I just felt that by not putting on the uniform, you know, because seconds, in my mind, could mean lives. I just wanted to be able to respond equipped to stop the threat as soon as I could. The Santana shooting happened almost two years after the horrific shooting at Columbine High School. After that incident, local deputies held active shooter training drills at a high school. At the time, the Sheriff's Department's policy was for deputies to stage at a scene and wait for the SWAT team. Christine Robbins recalls posing the question, what if it happened here? She remembers the response of one deputy, Ollie Perez. Ollie Perez, who was one of the first responders that went in to the, to the school, he says, I don't know about the rest of you, but I can't stand by and let kids get hurt or shot while we're waiting for resources. I'm going to go in. I talked to my team and said, I don't know about you guys, but well, I'm not waiting while, while kids are getting shot. We're going in. And that was, a, that was all of us together. As fate would have it, now retired Deputy Perez confronted and would be the one who handcuffed the shooter. Perez was one of the first deputies to go on campus. Unbeknownst to us at the time, as we were on one side of a wall, on the other side, there was a bathroom. This is the bathroom where the shooter fired on several students. He would reload, step outside, and fire again before finally surrendering. He was really calm, and I'll never forget as long as I live. He was really calm, and he kind of smiled, and he's like, it's just me. I'm the only one. Because of the Santana shooting, the Sheriff's Department developed a regional response plan. It's called Immediate Action Rapid Deployment. It's now routine to immediately enter a scene and stop a threat. It's exactly what the Robbins, Ollie Perez, and a team of other first responders did that day 20 years ago. It absolutely saved lives. You know, emotionally, it, it's, there's not a time that I drive by Santana High School. I mean, I'm, I'm a resident out here in East County. And when I drive by Santana High School, I, I always think about it, and I always feel for the two young men and their families. We cannot look back on this day without thinking of the victims of this senseless tragedy. This is live out front of uh, Santana High School right now, a memorial to those victims. I did not reach out to those families today to rehash old wounds, but I, I do want to acknowledge the incredible emotion that they are most certainly feeling today, 20 years after the shooting happened. Catherine? Yeah, no doubt, and just hope they know that you know we're all thinking about them for sure. Um, Artie, you were there when this happened that day right across the street reporting on what was happening and I'm curious if, if you mind reflecting a little bit about what stands out to you about that terrible day. You know, Catherine, the command post was set up right across the street in a strip mall across the street here from Santana High School. What I remember the most, I think, is the shock and disbelief of what was happening because you have to remember, uh, you know, sadly, unlike today, 20 years ago, aside from Columbine, a school shooting was something that you just did not hear about, and there was national interest. I spent the day providing reports for NBC stations across the country. There was that kind of interest in this story, and I remember getting back to the station well after midnight. There was a call from the UK, from a BBC radio station. They wanted to talk about what had happened here in Santee, California, international interest in this school shooting 20 years ago. 
Yeah, I remember being a, a reporter in another part of the country and, and following the story too as well. Um, and can you also put into perspective really how this one day for the community, certainly for the victims, um, just the impact that it had, not just then, but I'm assuming 20 years later now. Oh, that's a great question. And, and you know, we heard from Deputy Ali Perez. I, I talked to him this morning, and you heard him say he cannot drive by the high school with, without thinking uh, uh, about those those families. And we heard from some of those families and the victims of this shooting a few years ago when the shooter actually tried to get his sentence commuted because of his age at the time of the shooting. That did not happen, but at the time, we did hear from family and victims. And so, obviously, this still strikes an emotional nerve, and most certainly on anniversaries like today and birthdays, those significant dates, it just uh, opens up that wound that, uh, you know, just still doesn't heal. You just have to learn to live with it. And certainly the best we can do as a community is come together and support the victims and just help them get through this. Absolutely. And, you know, a, a nice job with those interviews because I think it's also important when we look back at this to remember what we've learned so hopefully we can keep more kids safe in the long run. Very good point, Catherine. And that's exactly why the Sheriff's Department uh, that were involved in this wanted to talk to us because it really was about lessons lessons learned and it's it, it's interesting to think about the policy you know 20 years ago where you had to wait and stage in the area before the SWAT team got there before you could go in now it's react and get to that incident and try to calm the threat as soon as possible yeah, well, those first responders certainly did a fantastic job given a horrible circumstance. Absolutely. Artie, thanks so much. Really appreciate it.